Hey guys, MZ here, and welcome to something new. <laughs> uh, this is the Innocent Luna's Eclipse. Yeah, I can talk. It's got a long freaking title. Uh, the Innocent Luna's Eclipsed Sinner. Uh, I guess the whole thing would be Notch, the Innocent Luna's Eclipse Center, but I, I, I kind of just like that, the Innocent Luna's Eclipse Center, I think that's pretty sweet. That's just me, okay? Probably I'll shorten it, just call it Notch, but that just seems kind of weird, because Notch is the guy that made Minecraft, so... I don't know. We'll do a coin toss later and figure it out. Anyways... <clears throat> so... I don't even know what to expect from this game. When I booted it up, it uh, it warned me of blood, violence, flickering lights, and patterns. So I'm guessing that A, it's not kid-friendly, B, if you have an epilepsy thing, or if ep yeah, epilepsy runs in the family, you probably shouldn't watch this. But for the rest of us, we're going to dive in, we're going to see what we're actually dealing with. Because I think, I think, we're in for something here. Alpha episode. Yeah, sure, we'll get started here. Please tell me your family name. Um, I'm going to stick with the, uh, the defaults on this one. Yuhito. Yuhito? Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Why not? But, uh, this game... I think this game is going to follow along the same lines of Lucy. No, whoa. The story is fictional. Please treat it as a fantasy show. <laughs> Basically, this is not a real story based on real people. Gotcha. No problem, man. But I think this will follow in the same the same vein that I'm looking to follow for right now. And that is if we experience something, or just because we experience something, is it real? Hmm. Ooh, what are we dealing with here? Oh wow, it's kind of advancing on its own, what do you know? Well, I just don't like that, I'm gonna have to fix that. Give me just one sec, guys. Hmm. That was really weird. Uh, I think if it doesn't detect that you're, you know, going to advance the text or not, that it will do so on its own. So, a little annoying. Did not know that did that. But hey, whatever. Uh, let's see. It's midnight. The distant towns in the forest are all shrouded in an uncomfortable silence. A mysterious visitor breaks the silence a while later. A blurred figure appears in the distance amongst the dense water mist. Hmm. Okay. So, there's going to be some grammar issues. I'll try not to nitpick, I swear. Thin steps can be heard in the heavy rain. A man in a black outfit is walking towards the depths of the forest. The forest seems to have a guest tonight. He probably wants to remain unknown as he's wearing black all over. A giant stuffed bag is on his back. The corners of the bag sag greatly, suggesting that something heavy is inside. The man in black walks quite The man in black walks quite slowly. He doesn't seem to be bothered by the giant bag. He advances slowly, some liquid is dripping out of the bag. Even on a dark night, the liquid is clearly visible. Hmm. Okay, so we have a creepy man dressed all in black, wandering into a pretty gnarly looking forest. I really like that, that, like, mist effect going across the screen there. I really kind of dig that. Kind of adds to the whole ambiance of, hey, no one should really be here, because bad things happen here. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> The liquid's color is totally different from the transparent and pure water. There must, there must be something unusual inside the bag. I'm, I'm gonna vote for a dead body. Wherever he passes by, a distinctive trail is left. To this forest immersed in darkness, 
the man in black is no stranger. Oh, so he's dumped bodies here before. Hmm. The heavy rain and muddy road keep people from trespassing. But he doesn't seem to care about the heavy rain. On the contrary, he looks like he's enjoying the rain and walks quite slowly. Afraid of waking up the sleeping forest, he barely makes a sound. However, the liquid inside the bag is dripping more and more, and nearly the whole bag is stained. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a dead body, and he's probably dropping it off. What am I going to do with it? People may notice me if I'm not doing something about it. Is it really difficult to bring the whole thing back? Oh, well, maybe he's... Maybe he's a hunter. Maybe he's... I don't know. Hmm. The man's abrupt, abrupt words break the silence, but he is alone, so nobody hears or responds. His cold voice is drowned out by the sound of the rain. Hmm. <laughs> it's okay not to bring back the whole body this time. Oh, so it is. Ugh. So he's wandering around in the forest with his bag strapped to his back. With that dripping... Ugh. I'm going to dispose of it here. Blurting out these words, the man in black throws the bag on the ground heavily. A muffled sound is heard. Only a soft object bumping onto the hard ground could make such a sound. Yep, he's disposing of a body. More and more liquid oozes out due to his violence. The man becomes impatient and unpacks the bag rudely. A human body suddenly comes out. It's a beautiful girl who is lifelessly packed into the bag. Hmm. She looks like she is sound asleep. Aww. Well, she can't be sound asleep if she's dripping from the bag. Hmm. Neither the pouring rain nor the man's violent throw can wake her up. The unknown liquid is from her body. It keeps oozing. Her body is covered by the thick colored liquid. The liquid is her blood. Well, that's... Uh, that's so... That's just bad. That's... This is one hell of a way to start up a frickin'... Ugh. She lost excessive amounts of blood and died. <clears throat> the man stares closely at the girl. She's such a beauty, but she's lying in a pool of blood. Poor girl. Smiling, he draws a sharp knife from his waist. Now how can he say that if he's going to smile and then draw a sharp knife from his waist? I mean, really? His cold eyes reflecting the moonlight. His cold eyes reflecting the moonlight are somehow very clear. He slowly bends down and points the knife at the girl, with his eyes filled with contempt and indifference. Oh. Well, if she wasn't dead, she is now. His knife flashes under the moonlight. The girl's fair skin is cut open and blood comes gushing out like a spring. She, however, is, is as quiet as a doll. If she were, if she were alive, she would not have been able to stand the pain. The gash on her body continues gushing with blood, staining his face and body. <clears throat> now, how do you? Hmm. Okay, we got we got some. I got some questions about the uh, uh, depth of knowledge of the anatomy. He dips his finger in her blood and sucks it. Ugh. That's just gross. Delicious. It's such a pity not to bring it all back. But I can't risk being spotted, so I'll leave it here. Ooh. Goodness. With another flash, he cuts off a piece of flesh from her. It is such a brutal cut, more cruel than ever, that exposes her organs and organs and causes them to scatter all over. So he's setting up a crime scene? Maybe? Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to ponder here for a minute. So he, he carries her into the woods, and he slashes her, 
and then like cuts her open so that way it makes it worse than it actually is. Perhaps, well, if someone were to come and investigate, they would probably. Hmm. No, because. Uh... Sorry, guys. I'm just I'm getting lost in thought here over like you know crime scene investigations or something. Okay, it's enough. He looks at the tender flesh from the girl and glances at her broken body. It doesn't even matter if people see her. Who will be the first to find this poor thing? I really want to know. <laughs> if her body hasn't decayed when it's found, her flesh will still be edible. Oh, he's a cannibal. Ugh, gross. That's freaking disgusting. The man in black burst out in cold and harsh laughter before quickly running into the depths of the forest. The footsteps once again break the silence in the forest. He soon disappears in the distance. The poor dead girl is lying, is still lying in the cold water, with her skin washed pale by the rain. Hmm. So we... <clears throat> Chapter 1, The Dark Nightmare. The day we cease to live, huh? Hmm. Interesting. So this guy, like, sets up the crime scene for someone to find later? Perhaps? Hmm. I do not know. I am rather curious now. Ooh. Okay, we got a... We got a creepy clock in the background. We got a long corridor and red mist. Hmm. This brings back thoughts of, uh... Um... Oh, crud, what is that anime? Mm. That's it. Corpse Party. <clears throat> I watched that anime. That anime is freaked up, seriously. This just brings back all of, all those good memories there. Ugh. I'm alone in a strange and gloomy corridor. I can't remember how I got here and what happened to me. The corridor stretches on ahead of me, winding and endless. There are countless doors to the dark rooms on the sides of the corridor. The air is filled with a suffocating smell of blood that seems to come from those dark rooms. Ugh. Oh god. Having having had bloody noses <clears throat> quite a bit as a kid, actually. That was one thing I could never I never could stand. Is that iron metal smell or that taste? Ugh. It's probably why I can't eat rare meat. It's always got to be well done. I keep walking in the corridor and stay away from those rooms. I have never been here before. The smell of blood is everywhere in the corridor. What is this place? What is inside those dark rooms? It scares me to think about it. The only thing I want to do is go through the corridor and leave this place as soon as possible. The sound... Ooh. Oh my started to read there and there was like this sh the sound of glass shattering holy jeez the sound of cold objects colliding accompanied by the sound of liquid splattering can be heard unceasingly in the corridor these sounds creep me out well yeah I mean you're standing there minding your own business you got no idea how the frick you got there and you hear weird freaking sounds coming from the doors ugh or the rooms anyways ugh what exactly is in here Where's the smell of blood coming from? I have no idea where those sounds are from. What, what has happened or is happening in those rooms? Trust me, you probably don't want to know. Could they be the place where a psychopathic murderer dismembers bodies and stores them? Ideas like this can make me very fearful. <laughs> what? Who? Who thinks that? Start, I mean, really? Right off the bat? Wow. I'm aware of how chilled and fearful I feel, even though the corridor isn't that cold. I'm afraid something bad may happen to me if I don't leave right now. I increase my pace and walk towards the end of the corridor. Wait, that incessant tick-tock that's happening. I, I don't know if it's coming through 
in the in the recording, but think of an old grandfather clock. It's just tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. God, it's so annoying. Those clocks are neat. They're a novelty in my opinion. I wouldn't mind having one in the house, but I I would not be able to have it wound up at all. It would just drive me insane. I don't know how long I have been walking. I just focus on the path ahead. <clears throat> it seems to take forever to go through the corridor. When I look around, I find myself in a different place. I can tell that I didn't stay put or keep going around in circles. <clears throat> At first I was able to see sunlight through the windows of the corridor. Now it's pitch dark outside the windows, so I can tell that I've been walking for a long time. Yeah, and uh... It looks like the only room with a light on it is the creepiest freaking room in the place. Not gonna lie, I'm a little, little unsettled right now. But the long time I've spent walking has all been in vain, as up to now, I am still trapped in this endless corridor. I came up with the idea of leaving this place to the window, but when I opened it, the only thing I saw was dazzling sunshine. Everything I'm looking for, flowers, plants, trees, buildings, even the ground, is nowhere to be seen. Hmm. So, this is just like a corpse party. Open up the window, take a look outside, all that's there is the building. Oh, that's freaky. That's really freaky. That's some, like, spirit realm limbo stuff there. I don't know how high I am off the ground. Normally, no matter how high the floor is, flowers, plants, and buildings on the ground can still be seen. However, looking out from the window here, I saw nothing except the deep blue sky and golden sunshine. I Wait a sec. You just said it was pitch dark outside. How can you, all you see be sunshine and blue sky? I mean, look at it. It looks dark out there. Seriously. Anyways, I keep wondering how it is possible as I look outside the window. I don't dare to think about what might happen to me if I jump out the window. What? I don't dare to think about what might have... what might happen to me if I jump out the window. Oh, sorry guys, I completely read, read that wrong. My bad. So I have to give up on the thought and stare ahead and keep walking. As long as I don't stay put or retrace my steps, I eventually will get to the end of this corridor. Well, yeah, hopefully. I mean, like I said, we're looking at some spirit realm shit here, so you could just be walking the same corridor for ever. Although the corridor, corridor isn't straight, it is the only road in sight. I have two choices. One is to go forward, and the other is to turn back. Well, since you already came this far, what's the point of turning back? However, going into a walled-up room is pointless and beyond discussion. Oh, because, yeah, because I reference those, those, uh, I'm guessing, rooms. Mm, classrooms, maybe? Nah, probably not classrooms. Anyways. Alright, so we should either go forward or go back, because we don't want to go in those rooms. Sounds reasonable. So I believe I can reach the end if I go along. I stop unconsciously and s smell a much stronger scent of blood. The smell is too strong to breathe, but nothing happens around me. Suddenly, the faded fear clutches at me even more strongly. Could it be that I've come to the storage place where the dismembered body is being kept? Oh, why, why did he jump to those weird conclusions? Yeah, well... <clears throat> Or is it the place where a murder is going on? Suppressing this horrible thought, I find cold sweat breaking out of my forehead. The sweat deepens my fear. I stand in the middle of this corridor stiffly and watch the surroundings closely. Ooh, we, we got some broken glass again. Suddenly a cold sharp sound is heard in the quiet dark or quiet corridor. This, Whoa. 
So that was a really weird sound. I honestly hope that didn't come through because that was like the sound of some woman screaming in the distance while some freaking dinosaur is tearing at her. Just ugh. Beside the sharp noise, the sound of liquid splattering and a girl's scream can also be heard. The scream fills every corner of the corridor. At that moment, the room seems to tremble. After the scream dies down, the corridor returns to a state of terrified silence. Just like nothing ever happened. I find myself trembling from the shock and fear. I was able to determine where the scream came from. It came from the room beside me. What happened in there? Judging from that scream, it's natural to think about the brutal murder of that girl. The cruel scene of dismemberment of that girl emerges in my mind. My fear is reaching its limits. Why are we jumping to the conclusion of dismemberment? Why? Why? Is that going to be a recurring theme here? I mean, honestly? Freaky. What should I do? Well, let's see. Go forward and, and pretend that that never happened. Or enter the room and risk getting ripped to shreds. Hmm. Uh, well, unfortunately, if people actually need my help, I'm probably going to jump and help them. Uh, it's a horrible character flaw. One of these days I'll get over it. Now well, let's find out. The scream of that girl still echoes in my ears. I may save her if I enter the room now. I can't turn a blind eye when someone is in danger. Damn straight. We gotta jump in there. We gotta punch that dinosaur in the face. Yeah, I don't know if it's a dinosaur, but it sounded like one. We gotta punch that dinosaur in the frickin' face and save the girl. <clears throat> it's, nothing could go wrong here. So I decide to follow that sound and enter the room. Later, I push the door open. What? So, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. I decide to follow that sound and enter the room. Later, I push the door. So what, do we do? We decide to sit down and maybe have a cup of tea first? You know, think about it. Some Earl Grey and some, some biscuits. What the? Oh my god. Okay, I didn't, I didn't really have a problem with this up until right now. This is, wow. Alright, I'm gonna try not to nitpick, guys. I really am. Ooh, what are we finding? Dinosaur I get to punch in the face? Oh. After going in, I see a broken room and great dense white fog. How, how, how is the room broken? My eyesight blurs upon entering the white fog. If someone were, If someone were to assault me right now, I would be doomed. But now I can't get distracted by those thoughts. I try to restrain my fear and panic and look for people in the room. Is it? It is really quiet. I carefully walk around the room to try to find the source of the scream. <clears throat> but after a while, to my surprise, I find nothing here. How come? Am I wrong? It is impossible. I heard the sound loud and clear, and it was quite near me. Well, there were other rooms. Maybe you'd, maybe you just frickin' missed the room. It is no use staying here anyway. I'd better go out. Hmm. Ooh. I go back to the corridor. I'd rather leave here as soon as possible than look for the source of the scream. Therefore, I decide to go along and find the exit as soon as possible. That's a pretty noble idea right there. Yes, I know, I wanted to punch the dinosaur in the face and save the girl, but hey, you know, we don't always get the things we want. And I have a feeling our protagonist here is not going to get out. Poor person. Yeah, we tried to save him anyways. Whoa. Yuhito? That was what I named the main character, wasn't it? What? I see a girl's figure when I look ahead in the corridor. 
but it disappears immediately. Oh, don't tell me. <clears throat> Did they make me name a character just so I would have a ghost to interact with? Really? Is that is that is that what happened here? <sighs> Game? That, that's not very nice. Someone is indeed here, judging from that figure. It must be a girl. If so, the sound I heard earlier makes sense. What happened to her? I must chase her down. Yeah, right? I'm in full gear to run towards the end of the corridor, for there is not only an exit, but also a mysterious girl there. Oh, so she's like... Ooh. Thunder blasts outside the room and it begins to rain. If I can't get out soon, things will get messier. The strong lightning helps me see clearly which room the girl goes in. She must know the way out. Okay, I must chase her down and clear my doubts. Yeah, sounds like a noble idea there. I rush to that room. I clearly saw that girl disappear into the room. I can't be wrong this time. I take a deep breath and open the door. Uh-oh. Ooh, we got some... How? What the hell? Oh. Oh, so is it... Okay, I'm confused. So is Yuhito our character? And we're now playing as her? Or him? I don't know if Yuhito's a male or female character or name. Anyways, so what was all that before? Was all that just mental dialogue, and now we're actually saying something? Yeah, well, well, we'll figure it out here in a minute. I'm shocked by the bloody scene. The whole room is covered in blood, which I have never seen. Well, I would hope that you haven't seen that much blood. Just saying. The strong smell of blood tests my limits. I start to feel sick. I, th I throw up badly, as miserable as I am. I still don't want to leave until I find that girl. Uh, wow. That's, um, it's pretty jacked up. <clears throat> I feel much better after vomiting most of the stuff out of my system and pull myself together to look closely at the room. Then suddenly, I see... Whoa. Nanami? Are you Nanami? This girl is Nanami Shio, whom I knew since childhood. I'm a little embarrassed to call her my childhood sweetheart. Aww. <coughs> so we got, we got a little childhood friend. Slash sweetheart. She doesn't seem to recognize me and stands there at a loss. I can't help wondering why she's here. I feel somehow completely at a loss coming here. But why is she here? Nanami Shio. I call her again loudly this time. She responds. She slowly turns to me, but her look is full of fear. I feel cold and stiff when she stares at me. I don't know what to say. Nanami Shio, are you okay? What happened? Uh oh. Uh oh. Dot dot dot. That's not like that's that's never a good sign. Although why is she all she's freaking like wide eyed and she's got a cute little sundress on, but why is she all she's got that wide eyed oh my god look behind you look on her face. She does not respond and stands stiffly. Nanami, do you remember me? I'm Yuhito. Yuhito? Aww. She just, like, she's trying to place the memory but can't, maybe? Hmm. After I tell her who I am again, she finally talks, which comforts me a little. Yeah. Nanami, what happened to you? Hmm. Again, there's an awkward silence. She looks away and keeps silent. Nanami, could you answer my questions? 
Well, dude, or whoever you are, I'm probably going to guess that this is a bit of a lost cause. Maybe. Not 100% on that. But anyways, guys, I think I'm going to end this episode here. As we have found a creepy house and a creepy girl and lots of weird shit. Ugh. Boy. I don't know. I just don't know. But the answers, or the question still remains. There are no answers yet, but there's lots of questions. If we experience it, does that make it real? Hmm. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this little step into this new series. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I hope you have a good day, and 